What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel and to another video. This week's video, I'll show you how I made this custom bar that I've got right here. This bar is made from pine tongue groove and southern yellow pine framing lumber. And in this video, I'll show you exactly how I made this. So I hope you like this video and you find the content useful. If you like what you see, drop a comment down below. Let me know what you think. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video as it really helps my channel out. And with all that said, let's go ahead and get into the action. All right, so the first thing we need to do to build this bar is to build the inner frame, the inner frame will support all of the tongue and groove pieces that go on the outside and this inner frame will be made from basic 2x4s. So here I'm cross cutting Douglas fir 2x4s to length and the frame that we are going to make is going to look a lot like if you're building a wall. So you put the top and the bottom piece and then you put two studs in the middle. Turned out that these were actually pretty close to 16 inch centers. That's not necessarily important but I just thought that it was kind of ironic because that's what typical wall spacing is. So these pieces are tacked together using glue and screws. Now the glue is probably overkill and not necessary, but what the heck, it won't hurt anything. And because this will be covered up by the tongue and groove boards, this doesn't need to be all that pretty. You just need an inner frame that's sturdy. At this point, you should have something that looks like a window frame or a jail cell, depending on how you want to look at it. And next we will build two sides in similar fashion. So you just saw me put this back piece up here and then also two new pieces on the side. Now I didn't film me making these two pieces here just because they're repetitive and I didn't want the video to get boring. But these frames here are made exactly the same as the main back frame you saw me make first. The only difference is, is that there's a piece in the middle that runs across which will be used for a shelf. So this piece is a little bit shorter than this. But like I said, and what I'm trying to emphasize is that these side pieces here, so this one and then the one back there, are built the same exact way as the main frame over here. So I'm gonna take this piece and put it over by the other piece and you can see the only difference between this piece and the far piece is that this far piece is the same height as the main frame and this one here like I said is 10 inches shorter. Now the top of this one matches the internal brace of this piece here so there will be boards that go across here for the shelf and then there's a middle piece that these two pieces are the same height here so another middle shelf will go across and then the bottom piece which is the bottom of the frame obviously is the same height. So I'll take the one corner piece and put it back over here and that'll make the internal frame of the bar. So it wouldn't make a whole lot of sense to have three frame pieces of a one piece bar. So we want to attach these pieces together. In order to do that, I'll just be using screws, screwing the side frame of this one directly into the back frame. I used eight screws on each side to connect the side frames to the back. Again, that is probably overkill. But overkill will become a common theme in this video. If you don't believe me, just wait until you see the brad nails later. Really, I think I set a world record for the most amount of brad nails used in one video. Anyway, here is a look at the frame completely assembled. And again, it doesn't have to be all that pretty. Sturdiness is what we're going for with this frame. So a bar without shelving is pretty well useless because if you don't have shelves, where are you supposed to put your bottles and cups and everything else that would go with the bar? So obviously I needed to make some shelves. Now these shelves are made from 2x10s yellow southern pine and I could have used 2x8s but of course the store didn't have 2x8s so I decided to use 2x10s instead and just cut them down to length. So I planed both sides and then I jointed one edge and then I would rip the other edge off to length before gluing these boards up to their final form. When you think about what I'm doing here, woodworking is so weird. You take a board, you make it smaller, you glue it to another board to make it bigger. It just doesn't make any sense. And the whole process is kind of contradictory if you think about it. But that's part of the fun and that's what makes this such an interesting thing is that you can make the boards to any dimensions you need to for pretty well any circumstance. So philosophical thoughts aside, once I have these two boards milled up to the dimensions that I need, I glue them together. And the width is the most important part of these shelves as the width of the shelves will need to match up to the shelving supports of the piece of the frame that I made earlier. So these random boards that I'm putting in here will come into play later in the video when we put that bottom rail as a foot support on the frame at the very end of the video. But all these boards are, are some scrap 2x6s that I just had laying around. So the ones on the outside you can just put screws in on the side. 
Obviously this one in the middle though, because those outside boards are already put in, there's no way to get to the sides to put screws in there. So I just cut some pocket holes on the outside and the inside and attached that in between those middle studs using the pocket holes. So at this point the main frame is now complete and now is the fun part where we get to cut all of these tongue and groove boards to length and we will then tack them on using brad nails. Before we do that though I first wanted to rip the groove off of this very bottom piece because I was afraid that that groove may break being down at the very bottom if it's kicked or if the bar is moved or pushed around or something like that. I still wanted to capture that tongue and groove look even at the bottom, so I trimmed that edge with a chamfer bit to make it fit along with the other pieces. I wanted the outside pieces on to fit the overhang of the front piece, so I clamped some scrap pieces on, and then it was time to get to work with the brad nailer. So if you put brad nails in just a random pattern all over the board, that'll restrict wood movement to some degree. Now the brad nails will flex a little bit, but still they will restrict wood movement. So we get around this by only putting brad nails on one end of each board. So right here you can see that I'm only putting brad nails on the tongue of this board and then when I put the next board on, the groove of that board will hide the brad nails so they'll never be seen. If you repeat this pattern, the brad nails will be used in conjunction with the tongue and groove pattern to keep the board secure. And it'll also allow for wood movement since they're only secured on one side. Since the height of the bar did not line up with the total height of each of the tongue and groove boards assembled, I just ripped the tongue off of the final board similar to how I ripped the groove off of the lower board. And then that last board can again be secured with brad nails. A record setting number of brad nails if I might add. So moving over to the sides of the bar, we are going to attach these tongue and groove panels the exact same way that we attach the front panels to the bar. That's just lining them up and then putting a brad nail on the tongue of those boards to hold them all in place. So I put both side panels on and then it was back to the shelves which I ran through the planer one more time just to get that middle glue seam out. And then after that it didn't take me long at all to realize that we had a small problem with the shelves. So we're at the point in the video where I've messed up. I would messed up yet so I figured it was probably due anyways. But you just saw me put the tongue and groove on this side in. I went ahead and put this side on in and since you already saw me do that I didn't film it. But here's where I ran into a problem. So I just ran the shelving boards through the planer a second time to get them all smooth now that they're glued up. And I went to put them in for a test fit and I realized that because I already have these planks in there there's no way that I'm going to be able to get the bottom board in. So here's what I'm talking about. Let me show you. So the top board fits right on easily because you set it down. The middle board I can get in because of the slot that's right there. I can slide it in. But the bottom board is longer than it is from here to here so now it won't slide down in there. Here's what I'm talking about. So it's all the way against the corner there. And then over here, you can see there's not enough room. And I can't pull this back, of course, because I already have it screwed in. Could take the screws off. I could cut this shorter. I think I'm going to try to pop these panels out. Uh, there's only three that I'll have to take out to get that bottom shelf in. So I'll probably try to do that. But anyway, here's just a quick mistake that I made on that. So we'll try to fix that up, get the shelves in, and then we can put those panels back on the side. So call that a mistake if you would like, but it was actually a pretty easy fix. Also, according to Bob Ross, we don't make mistakes, just happy little accidents. So those popped off of there pretty easily. Unfortunately, of course, it looks like the brad nails just came out and stayed in. So I get to pull all these nails out. That should be fun. But anyway, I guess I'll put the shelves in first, then put the outside panel on. So lesson learned, not that bad. Wasted a couple boards and had to pull some nails out. Could have been worse. All right, let's get back to it. In order to attach the shelves to the bar, I will be using Z-clips. So I'm using the slot cutting router bit and my palm router to cut out the slots for the Z-clips. If you've watched my channel and seen my previous videos, you know that this is my preference of attaching tabletops. The Z-clips work awesome. The router bit also works awesome for cutting those slots. 
And if you do use that router bit to cut the slots out, either make sure that you let the bit completely stop or that the bit is completely flush whenever you retract it from the board because that bit can risk kickback, so just make sure you be careful with that. Since the side panel is no longer on the bar, meaning it's no longer in the way of these shelves, the shelves slid in pretty easily. Then I could just flip it up on its side and use screws to attach the Z-clips to those boards, which will keep them in place, but also allow for wood movement as those boards expand and contract with temperature and humidity changes. I should have done this before I attached the shelves in there, but I put a chamfer bit on the router and then I trimmed the edges to get rid of the sharp edge on each of those shelves. After I put the other side panel back on, it was time to go ahead and get started on this bar top. So just like the shelves, this will be made from yellow southern pine. These are 2x10s again. So I'm planing both of them on both sides to get them flat and then running one edge across the joiner. I know that this is not technically the correct way to mill something up. You should use the joiner first to face joint that and then run the other side through the planer. But my joiner only has an 8 inch bed and this was a 10 inch board so that really wouldn't be possible. I guess I could have used a planer sled to flatten that but that's an idea for a different video. Anyway I glued the two boards together to make up the bar top. And then once again, just like the shelves, I ran this through the planer to get everything flat and get rid of that glue seam in the middle. That was the next day after they were dry, so I let it dry for about 24 hours before working with it again. This bar will be an L-shaped bar, and I thought that the top piece would look better if it was cut at a diagonal angle and then the seams matched up, rather than making it look like a butt joint with one end butting up against the other. Like you just saw, I cut that angle at a 45 degree angle using my track saw, and then I'll connect these pieces using glue, but I'll also be using dominoes to get the joint exactly lined up, as well as adding a little bit of extra strength in the middle. If you're not familiar with the domino, it's a machine that cuts a very precise mortise, and then you can use separate tenons to fill those mortises and connect pieces together. If you don't have a domino, you could also do this using dowels, biscuits, or pocket holes on the underside. The domino does work extremely well here. It makes the process very easy and it's a very efficient way to do something like this very accurately. Whenever you are using dominoes at a glue seam like this, the strength of the joint will actually come from the glue itself, but the dominoes will add a little bit of extra strength. I'm using the biggest dominoes that Festool sells. These are the 140 by 14, so this is a tenon that is over 5 inches long. And if you are interested in checking out the domino, you can look down in the description where I have a link to not only the domino, but all of the other tools and products that I've used in this video. So be sure that you check those out. While the top was gluing up, I figured this would be a good time to go ahead and finish trimming out everything on the bar. I couldn't get an extra panel around that top shelf, so I put a piece over there to where the panel would fit in. We'll look more at that later, but for right now, I wanted to fix the issue of the gap that was behind the shelves. So because there wasn't anything there, if you had a glass or a bottle or something, it could fall down in there all the way to the bottom, spill your drink, break a glass, and ruin your day. I had quite a bit of leftover tongue and groove board, so I figured that I would put that on the inside as well as the outside to give the bar more of a complete look. The problem with this was that there was a gap in this space, the thickness of a 2x4, where I connected the frame together earlier. The tongue and groove is only 3 quarter inches where that thickness is an inch and a half, so I ripped some scrap strips and then I just nailed them onto those studs which would make up the difference of the space. Once those strips were tacked onto the studs, I could begin putting the tongue and groove boards in to make up the interior panel, which would butt up against the shelves in order to prevent anything from falling down in the gap. Now at this point, the bar frame as well as the panels are pretty much finished, but I didn't really like how the corners lined up. 
I thought that it looked incomplete, so like I said, I had some scrap tongue and groove board left over. I ripped the tongue and the groove off, and then I used those pieces to cover up the corners. And here's the result, which in my opinion looks a whole lot better than it did. So we're back to that one piece where I said that the panel had to be trimmed to fit earlier. And this part got a little bit tricky because this side wall is shorter than the main wall and how I connected the main frame pieces together left me with a weird overhang that was kind of awkward to work with. So I trimmed out a slot on this piece that you see here and this will go on top of that 2x4 that I put over top of the shelf earlier. I'm cleaning it up with a chamfer bit and one thing that I didn't mention earlier was those vertical pieces that went around the corners. Those are also trimmed with a chamfer bit on the inside where it doesn't butt up against the other piece. Here is a look at how everything is coming along and we almost have every piece on here. Before we put those final top panels on the inside, we need to attach the bar top. So after measuring equal spacing on the inside of each edge of the bar, I debated forever on how to put this top on, but I decided to go with these expansion brackets. Now I considered putting a screw up underneath the inside frame into the top, but I figured if the top ever needed to come off for some reason, that wouldn't be possible after I put those final internal panels on because those would block access to the screws that I put in. So I put five of these expansion brackets on the inside frame and six on the outside of the frame, which you won't see because I forgot to record that. But those brackets will hold the top on nice and secure while at the same time allowing for wood movement of the top if it does expand or contract. With the top secure, I could finally put those last two panels in and then the interior frame of the bar was finished. At this point, all there was left to do was to trim the bar top to size and trim those corners off to get rid of the sharp edges. One thing I like to do whenever I build something like this is to leave it oversized. That way you can trim it down at the very end. You can always take more off, but you can't add more. So if you make it to the exact dimensions and then it comes up a little short, that's where you run into a problem. At this point, I really liked how everything looked and was coming along, but I wanted to do something to make the bar top look a little bit thicker. So once again, using more leftover tongue and groove board, I ripped some of these down to I think about three inches or so, and then I just put an outer border using glue and brad nails around each end of the top. Attaching this border also created a lip underneath the bar top, so if you wanted to attach some lights or something under there, you could definitely do that and hide them behind the lip. Next, I sanded everything down, but everybody hates sanding, so I'm not going to make you watch any of that. I'm not going to go into a ton of detail on how I stained this, but I'm using a combination of Minwax Honey and Dark Walnut for the finish. For the clear coat, once again, not going to go into a ton of detail, but I'm using spar urethane. This is a satin finish, and I think the satin turned out really well and blended in perfectly with the look of the stain. In between coats, I sanded with 400 grit sandpaper and then used mineral spirits to wipe all that off. I should probably be using gloves here, but you know what they say. I also like to live dangerously. And with the danger level cranked way up, we wipe all of the dust and everything off of the top using those mineral spirits. Here's a look at everything that came off of that, so that really is an important step. In between coats, you want to sand everything down to get the bubbles out. And then on that final coat, you really want to slow down and take your time to get a good finish. The only thing left to do before this bar was finally finished up was to use some black iron pipe to build some foot rest or some foot supports down at the very bottom. That way when you're setting the bar you'll have something to prop your feet up on. I figured that it would be way easier to put the bar on its side and then attach everything that way than awkwardly try to hold them up. So I tipped the bar over and then used screws to secure everything in place. Now typically I would say I'm not the luckiest person of all time, but the measurements of this black iron pipe, oddly enough, matched up exactly to where I had those vertical pieces on the outside corners. I kind of couldn't believe that I got this lucky. Even on the side, it was the same thing. 
The piece was the exact length and the circular collars that I'm bolting in fit absolutely perfectly with not a quarter inch to spare on either side. So if you're making something like this for yourself and you'll be using these, I would definitely recommend trying to plan everything out as far as the measurements before you get started because I got 100% absolutely lucky that these happened to fit and I would not count on that every single time. So here's a quick look at the functionality of the bar. The iron pipe ended up being about the perfect height for sitting or drumming or if you're more of a standing guy like myself, any of those would work perfectly. Around back, there's plenty of storage room on the shelves. I tried to make the spacing in the shelves tall enough to where you could put some wine bottles or whatever type of bottles you have in there. So if you're making this for yourself, also take that into consideration. And with these final shots here, everything on the bar was finished up. This was a really fun build. This is actually the first bar I've ever made, so I really enjoyed this process. If you enjoyed the content of this video, please let me know by liking the video and dropping a comment down below. If you made it this far, thank you for watching. As always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And of course, stay tuned for more.